What's up with your bad selves, ladies and dudes? It's this guy, Jeremy, one of your very favorite people with Parkinson's here to tell you that I'm celebrating my 11th... Well, celebrating is probably the wrong word. I've had a, I've been, I was diagnosed 11 years ago with Parkinson's. This is kind of a, a retrospective on the last 11 years, if you will. But before we get to that, I would just like to tell you I now have an email address. I'll throw the text up on the screen. And I'll put a link in the description, jmacpodcaster at gmail.com. If you got something you want to say that maybe you don't want to put in the YouTube comments, shoot me a line. I got to get a drink of water here. I'm parched. I ate a bunch of crackers before I came down here. All right, I'm going to start with this. Daddy of the Year 2012. I'll throw a picture up so you can see a better, better shot of it. 2012 was one of the worst li years of my life. I was, I felt like I was broke down. I was, for most of the year, I couldn't work. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I'd been going through testing and couldn't get any answers. Just, I, I was mentally gone. I was physically gone. I was exhausted. I, I, I was miserable. I was depressed. And on top of that, my son was born in April of 2012. And it, although it was a joyous time, I felt completely overmatched. I mean... More so than most parents do. I felt like something, I knew something was wrong with me. Couldn't quite nail it down. Turns out it was Parkinson's. That was, I was diagnosed January 2013, so it's been 11 years. Yeah. Um, I actually been, I had this idea that I was going to do this big, long production. I think it's, that would be, I don't think I need that. I think it's just, I'll, I'll speak from my heart. Tell you some of the things I've went through in the last few years. Some of the ups and downs. I mean, you've seen this channel this channel's been around for a few years. I waited a few years before I started the channel because it was really kind of... I hadn't really wrapped my head around... I don't think I... I still have around the fact that I had this degenerative disease. Pretty heady stuff. Now, when I was diagnosed in 2013, I was immediately relieved because I had a name for the... For the devil in my head or the, the grill on my back. It was not a fun thing to hear. I came home and told my wife and there was like immediately like kind of relief mixed with dread. I'm sure you guys can relate to that if you've had the diagnosis. Or if, if you got a loved one who's had the diagnosis. So what do you do? You just get on with life until, until you can't. I mean... I was given the, the pills, the cinnamon, the levodopa, and I was I was able to work for two more years. But I, I like almost immediately started developing what's called dyskinesia, on uncontrollable movements in my legs, which led to me not being able to work. Pretty quickly, I mean, two years after, I mean, I had a very physical job. Honestly, the dyskinesia was so bad, I don't know that if I could have done anything. It was just, it's not gotten any better. It's been 11 years of a slow progression downward both physically and with the, the medicine not working as good as it should. But what, immediately upon taking the Cinemet, I felt like, I felt 10 years younger. People at work were like, wow, you you feeling better? I was like, hell yeah. But it only lasted for a while. But there's this cut, there's this window of time where the medicine is, I think it's called the honeymoon period. I hate that that's, that's the worst ter term possible as far as I'm concerned. Um... But there's this window of time where the medicine works and does what it's supposed to with limited um, or no side effects. Well, like I said, I got about two years out of it and then spent, basically spent the last nine years unemployable. Um, it was really hard to take it first. I mean, I know some people have said, well, you you got to stay home with your kid, which it was great to see him grow up. And he's, I mean, he's 11 now. Uh, but that's not the way you want to do it. I mean, I was just struggling physically with and mentally. It was, it was, a, it was a rough, rough time. But what I have learned is that a I've got a good wife. My wife is stuck to me, stuck with me through all this. I mean, I, I can I'm not always the most pleasant person. I know you guys can't imagine that. She stuck with me. I've, I've, I've found who my real friends are. I've, I've actually made new friends within the Parkinson's community. I mean, some some friends are just party friends, and when you can't party anymore, uh, and I can't party anymore, they kind of go away, and I get it. But uh, it's nice that. Through this Parkinson's community and some family members, I've really been able to sort of fill those voids of, of the friendships I used to have. I mean, I got to be honest with you. I, I'm really bummed I can't play guitar anymore. I mean, I, I can barely do it. It's not fun. It's a struggle. It's not... I mean, it's, it would be lying to say I can't play it, but I can't play near to the level I used to. And sometimes it's just frustrating to pick it up. 
That's the number one thing that bugs me. Uh, I think it bugs me more than not being able to walk. Um, if you see my other videos, of course, when I'm off my meds, I can walk. I'm stiff, but I can get around all right. Like, I didn't take my meds till about um, 1.30 today because it just allowed me to do more stuff. Now I'm exhausted. Probably after I do this video, I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> But yeah, I've learned. I've got good friends. I've got a good wife. I, I, I think Parkinson's, it's weird to say, has made me a better parent because I kind of have to check myself before I wreck myself, so to speak. Where before I had PD, before I knew I had PD, um, I would probably be more likely to lose my temper. Now I have to keep it reined in because the last thing people with PD need is to lose their temper. It makes their motors fluctuations all over the place it's just not good for you it's probably made me more made me more attentive father uh, i would like to think it's made me a better husband although i can't do as much i i think it's made me more sensitive it's given me a, definitely a, a new look a look a view on life i mean if you if you've watched this channel before i mean there's a video i did about initially when i was growing up being really afraid or not afraid but really uncomfortable around disabled people Maybe it was, maybe it was like something trying to tell me in the back of my head. Um, but it's made me more compassionate to people that with disabilities. And that was something that I sorely lacked before I was so infirmed. But the one thing that I would say to people is don't look at me and think you're going to be me. Now, granted, I saw a lot of good moments. I still love life, but... I think people, and I did this, I did this, I made the same mistake. I would go on YouTube and see all these horror stories and think, oh my God, how am I going to do it? Take it one day at a time, one day at a time. Don't be worried about the side effects of the medicine because you can't control that at all. Take your medicine as your doctor tells you and just hope it works as long as it can. I still have windows of time where I can do things. I've just, I've just learned that, that life is, is so much more simple when you just take things one task at a time. I mean, I've never been that kind of guy who's always kind of like wanted to like have it all lined up for the next decade. I can't do that right now. I mean, speaking of like this year is going to be a hell of a year. I'm actually researching uh, brain surgery for Parkinson's, DBS. That's fun. That's scary. So you got a big year ahead of me, but I I'm taking it one damn task at a time. Michael J. Fox, I don't know if he, I don't, he probably didn't come up with this, but he said, he said, if you worry about it, if you spend all this time worrying about it and it happens, then you've lived it twice. So I, it's hard. It's, it's not easy advice to do. In fact, in fact, I think my next video is going to be about worry and how, you, how it doesn't accomplish anything. But life is still good. And, and like, I just, it's frustrating for me when people, they only, when they see me at my worst or at my most stiff or my most wiggly, they can kind of project like fear. And I, I get it. Because I would have been that guy. Maybe that's why I think that way. But the fact is, life is still good. I, I, I mean, last night I hung out with some really good friends. It was fun. Uh, I had a couple glasses of wine. It was awesome. I don't need to party anymore. I don't need to get naked and run around my house like I used to. God, my wife is so happy about that. So yeah, just one day at a time, folks. I'm, I'm so grateful you guys have been with on this journey with me for the last few years. I hope to hope to continue to do, to do these videos weekly for a long time. You guys make me happy. You guys keep me strong. Give me something to shoot for. Give me something to do. I can't tell you how many times I've been down. And I'll just I'll look at my YouTube and get just get the sweetest, most supportive comments. There's a lot of good people out there. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of jerks out there, but there, I think there's more good people. And it's nice to see the internet being used for good instead of badness. <laughs> I said so eloquently. All right, that's all I got. I, well, once again, email me, jmac, I'll, I'll throw the, the text up again, jmacpodcaster at gmail.com. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Peace and love from the snowy city of St. Louis.